My name is Pauline Kirby. I'm the convener of the Southern Chai Historical Society Publications Committee, and we're the people responsible for this new publication, East Coast Encounters 1770. The first chapter in the book is about Cornell. I wrote this because I feel that a lot of times when Cook is mentioned in the Endeavour voyage and the meeting between the Indigenous people and the crew of the Endeavour at what is now Cornell, often it's like Cornell's in a vacuum. What is this place? What's it about? What is it like? So we wanted to set the scene to give the readers a bit of an idea of this little isolated community. And it was very isolated for many years. Until the 1950s, there was no road out there. People travel from Cronulla to Cornell, going through the sand hills, massive sand hills, swamps. It was a very difficult journey. Sometimes, though, they came by water. And for many years, there was a ferry service which brought people from the St. Susie district, from La Perouse. And especially, I think it was important that that La Perouse connection is mentioned because this helped keep the Indigenous community there in touch with Cornell. And they've still got that feeling, that connection with the place where the, some of their ancestors first stepped forward and met Cook and his crew. One of the things I, I like about um, going out to Cornell, it's a, a quiet place, that the village isn't as isolated these days, but it's still really a village, is when you go into the National Park where Cook's Landing Place is, you walk along, there's a lovely walk by beside the bay where the monuments are. But now in recent years, the National Parks and Wildlife Service that administer this area have given people a sense of the Indigenous uh, background to this area. They've interviewed many people from La Perouse and other Aboriginal communities to get their memories and their, their feeling for the place. There's visual reminders of this. So it isn't just Cook and the Endeavour, but it's a place where, as they call it, there was a meeting of two cultures. And that is what's celebrated every 29th of April at Cornell, uh, a ceremony which takes on board the Aboriginal people as well as the white people. Whereas in the past, of course, it was all whiteies, uh, some blacked up as Aborigines, uh, very non-PC type uh, celebrations were held. But now it's much more sensitive. There's, there's much more to do, of course. And national parks are working on improving the visitor experience at that place. But I like it. A, a lot of people say, oh, Cornell, it should be it, the birthplace of the nation, the birthplace of modern Australia, whatever. It should be a place where there's big monuments and statues and thousands of people visiting. Well, I don't agree. I like it as it is, low key, atmospheric. And when you walk along there, you get a sense of what it might have been like 250 years ago. Admittedly, over the bay, you're looking over at Sydney Airport and Port Botany and industrial developments. And behind you, you can see where Caltex Refinery was, uh, Cornell was in many ways industrial heart of Sutherland Shire. And over the years, they've had massive problems with pollution. The natural environment has been decimated. Our beautiful, magnificent sand hills are barely, there's barely any of those left anymore. Many changes have occurred. And that's the, some of the sorts of things I talk about in this chapter. And I also want to give people a sense of that community there at, at Cornell, the activists how in the 18, 1980s, those local people stopped Bayer Chemicals from establishing a plant at Cornell. They were sick of the pollution, the environmental devastation that had occurred over many years. So it's a very interesting place. It's a sand, at the end of a sandy peninsula, but it's a place that's iconic for many people. But I really don't want to see it as a, a big tourist attraction or somewhere where thousands of people go. I think it's nice as it is. And as I said, when national parks continue improving that indigenous content, that sense of the long, long occupation of the area, it will be even more atmospheric for us. So I hope you enjoy reading about Cornell, an isolated community.